Let's discuss the five major components that we have in an air conditioning system. We'll start with a compressor. And what's really neat is each of these components name tells you exactly what it does. The job of this compressor is to take a low pressure refrigerant and raise its pressure and temperature. What I want to do from this point on, whenever I'm talking about a compressor, I want you to think about an engine. An engine has pistons, rods, crankshaft, valves, it needs lubrication, and it needs a cooling system. If we start thinking about this as an engine, we'll be able to understand the way it functions better and how to do better maintenance on it. The line coming into the back of the compressor is going to be low pressure, low temperature. In fact, it should be sweaty, cold like a glass iced tea. The line leaving the compressor is going to be high temperature, high pressure, but still a vapor. From that point, we go to our condenser. Again, the line coming into the condenser is going to be high temperature, high pressure gas. But as the name implies, we're going to condense it. We're going to change this gas into a liquid. So we're going to need to remove some of the temperature. So we draw air across this from our clutch fan plus the ram air effect when the vehicle's going down the road. So if I took a temperature reading on this end versus the outgoing line, I would see that there's probably something between 16 and 26 degrees drop between those two ports. And that's what we're looking for. We'd also notice that coming in would be a vapor, coming out would be a liquid. But it's still going to be high temperature and it's still going to be high pressure. Now, with our engine, we need an oil filter. This will be our oil filter, and this also takes moisture out. This is called a receiver dryer. Again, the job of the receiver dryer is to clean up anything that would be coming out as far as contamination and keeping the oil clean and taking moisture out. If I were to take this apart and look at it, we would find a steel plate, fiberglass filter pad, 16 cubic inches of desiccant material, another filter pad, another screen, all being compressed by a big spring. From this point on, we go to our expansion valve. The expansion valve is a place where we drop, we come in as high temperature, high pressure. We now drop the temperature and pressure drastically. In fact, for a moment, it's about 20 degrees below zero coming out of here. So that's one reason we want to make sure there's no moisture. If a droplet of water was carrying around with a refrigerant, when it got to this point, at 20 degrees below zero, it would freeze just like that, and that would stop our system up. So coming out of here is low pressure, low temperature, now it's a liquid, and it's going to go into our evaporator. From our expansion valve, we go into our evaporator. Again, as the name implies, we're going to take this low pressure liquid that is in this, as it comes into this evaporator, and we're going to turn it back into a gas. Now, if I were to take rubbing alcohol and put it on the back of my hand, what would my hand feel like? The temperature would be very cold. Why? Because we're changing that alcohol from a liquid to a gas and the process of transforming that liquid to gas absorbs heat. That's exactly what we're doing in our evaporator. We're coming in with a liquid, we're running warm air across it with our fan coming from the cab, cool air is coming out the back, in the process of transferring that heat we're moving this from a liquid to a gas. And from this evaporator we go back to our compressor. Now one thing I want to note in our system in the five components, our compressor, our condenser, our dryer, our expansion valve, and our evaporator, as that refrigerant flows through that loop, so does our refrigerant oil. And that's very, very, very important to remember. This compressor comes with 10 ounces of oil in it. As it's operating, it pushes out refrigerant, but oil goes out with it. So it's very important that as that oil leaves, that the refrigerant is moving fast enough to carry the oil through all these different components and to make it back to the compressor. If we didn't do that, we'd be running a deficit and eventually run the compressor out of oil and then it would lock up. So it's important to remember that we keep the refrigerant flow proper, no restrictions, and that we have the pressures at the right pressures so that brings the refrigerant and the oil back to the compressor.